Okay, so I'm going to work number six now. And I went ahead and put it in because I wasn't exactly sure how they wanted me to break this down. Um, but now that I put it in and I got it right, I'm ready to explain it. So A is simple. Materials purchased on accounts. So we debit materials and we credit accounts payable for the 2770 B is not hard, but what makes it hard is that they give us a lot of information for one journal entry. So they gave us some materials requisition to jobs, which by definition means that the ones that we can assign to a job are direct materials. So I added up all the materials that got assigned to a job and I called them direct materials. So this is my total direct materials. Then I looked at factory labor. Everything that I could trace to a job, so all of these, are direct labor. So I put those there. And then I knew that my materials that were for factory overhead were my factory overhead materials and my labor that was indirect was factory overhead because it says for general factory use and that's that amount right there. So then I was given these spots, one, two, three, four spots over here. And so the only way to break it down and fit into this number of spaces was to put my direct materials and direct labor together, which makes perfect sense because both of them go to work in process. So I simply added up direct materials and direct labor because both of those go to work in process. And the total of those was 49,350. Then the two numbers that are going to go to factory overhead could be added together and both of those can go to factory overhead. The total amount that comes out of the materials account are both my direct materials and my indirect materials. So if I add up my direct materials and my factory overhead materials, this number right here is my total materials, which includes both indirect and direct. This is my total labor, which includes both direct and indirect. So I need to credit materials for that amount and credit wages payable for that amount. So again, it might have taken you a little bit of trial and error to figure out how to add together your items. Um, but now that you see that you add together anything that you put to work in process, add together anything you put to factory overhead, and um, then credit the two accounts that go with those, you would get to your correct answer. Okay, let's look at letter C. Factory overhead costs incurred on account, 5,880. So that's just factory overhead. It's an actual number, accounts payable, because it says on account, I believe it said 5,880. All right, letter D says depreciation on machinery and equipment. So anything in the factory that's indirect is factory overhead again. And accumulated depreciation is the account that we put that to. So that depreciation amount was for 1850. All right, so letter E says that the overhead rate, so when we do our rate, which is estimated factory overhead divided by estimated base, they got 70. So that's their rate. They calculated it for us. And then actual machine hours used are 239. So we take rate times actual base. So 70 times 239, because we say rate times actual base which is going to give us 70 times 239. We got 16,730. That's how much factory overhead we will apply. So to apply factory overhead, we take it out of factory overhead and put it to work in process. So it'll be work in process, factory overhead, and the amount of 16,730. All right, letter F says jobs completed are 301, 302, 303, 305. So when we complete a job, we take it out of work in process and put it into finished goods. So the question is how much goes there? So we need these jobs. We need 301, 302, 303, and 305. For those jobs, we need direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. All right, so let's go and see what we can find as far as direct materials for these jobs. So direct materials for job 301 is 3,080. For 302, it's 
3,760. For job 303, it's 2,490. For job 305, it's 5,360. All right, let's see what we can find for direct labor. Given to us again, so for job 301, it's 2,600. For job 302, it's 3,510. For job 303, it's 1,720. For job 305, it's 4,910. All right, for factory overhead, we'll need to apply our rate times the actual machine hour for each job. So our rate is $70. So for job 301, it's 70 times 16 hours. So 70 times 16. For job 302, it's 70 times 37 hours. For job 303, it's 70 times 45 hours. For job 305, it's 70 times 34 hours. All right, then if I add direct materials plus direct labor plus factory overhead, I can find out the total amount that needs to be moved from work in process to finished goods. And I believe that my number is 36,670. So that's going to go into finished goods out of work in process for 36,670. All right, letter G says, Jobs were shipped and customers were billed as follows. All right, so we build them. So that means accounts receivable will be for the amount that we build, which it says for job 301, how much do we bill them? Well, let's see, for job 301, we build 8160. For job 302, 11,830. For job 303, 21,340. And I guess that's all we sold. All right, so if we add those numbers together, that's how much we'll go to our accounts receivable. 41,330 goes to accounts receivable. That is also our sales number. That's how much we sold. That's how much we charged them. Now, to take care of the movement of inventory, we sold jobs 301, 302, and 303. I just better double check that that's correct. 301, 302, and 303. Sold jobs 301, 302, and 303. Yes. All right, so that means that those three jobs are right here. I'm going to add those together. That is the amount that I move out of finished goods and into cost of goods sold. So 24,020 is going to be out of finished goods and into cost of goods sold. All right, so that completes my sale on account. Then it asks me to post the appropriate entries to T accounts for work in process finished goods using the identifying letters. I'm going to do a couple of these. I don't know that I'll do them all because once we have all of this information, then it's easy to drop it into here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for every time I did something to work in process. So here, I debited work in process for 49350 for letter B. So I just put in letter B. 49,350. Let's go see what else I did to work in process. Put it here when I allocated my factory overhead to it. So 16,730 from letter E. Then I moved it out when I completed some goods. So I moved out 36,000. 670 from letter F. So now it wants me to get an ending balance. So I foot my debits, I foot my credits, I subtract the sides larger. So it's going to be 
49,350 plus 16,730 minus 36,670 gives me 29,410 on that side. And I would keep going like that. For this, um, you can just look over here and get your, your numbers for your un, unfinished um, jobs, which are the ones that you haven't yet completed. So you'll look up here. Let's just go and see which ones are not completed. So it told us that we have these jobs and we completed through 305. So the only uncompleted job I think is going to be job number 306. So you'll just accumulate job 306 just like we did here. Threat materials would be, that's so fun, I can't stop. 3910. Direct labor would be 3120. Factory overhead would be 70 times 29. So, job number. Wait, unfinished jobs. Well, I wanted my unfinished job to be 306, but I don't appear to be able to pick 306. Schedule of unfinished jobs. Oh, because there's also 34. 304 was also not finished. See, jobs complete are these, but 304 was not complete. All right, so direct materials for 304 was 8,440. Direct labor was 6,450. Factory overhead is 70 times 78. All right, now. 304, direct materials, 8,440. Direct labor, 6450. Factory overhead, 5460. Total, 20,350. And 306, which is the one I knew about, is 3910, 3120, 2030. I'm just reading it from right here. Total of 9060. Total of those two together, 29,410. All right, schedule of completed jobs. So the one that's complete that did not yet get sold, you'll look up there and see which one is complete that did not yet sell. And that's the one that you'll put in there and you'll accumulate the cost. So let me know if you have any questions, thanks.